Hey guys, this is part three in my video series about what is the best cheap wireless guitar system. So the first one I released about two years ago, part two I released about one year ago, and this is part three, and I'm going to kind of be responding to comments and just sharing more info that I've learned over these last few years while using these. So first of all, a lot of this is based on your comments that I've seen from you guys. So thank you guys for everyone who has commented and contributed to the conversation so we can all learn more about these. I am gonna divide this up into three main different sections. Part one is gonna be about understanding how cheap these are and comparing pair them to, you know, entry level and higher end stuff and what you're missing and what you get with these cheap ones to see if it's right for you. Part two is going to be all about does it work with XYZ pickup, amp, bass, acoustic, pedal, finally going to be able to give you an answer to that for you guys, sort of. And then part three is going to be about the best way to use these, who it's for and when to use them. So I actually was very fortunate and I just got back a about a month or two ago from doing two weeks in the Bahamas playing music. I'm really blessed to do it. But while I was there, I brought the Swift Audio ones, you know, the $50 Swift Audio one. That's probably one of my most popular videos as far as the individual ones. I gigged with that one. It worked fantastic. It was exactly right for that situation. So I'm basically going to go over this to see if this is something that is right for you. I ultimately do still think that these cheap wireless are awesome. You just have to understand the limitations of them and not set your expectations too high. And just know a few strategies you should know when you're going to use these live. And I will conclude by giving my recommendations for cheaper and higher end stuff as well. I'm also going to be doing a giveaway to one of my subscribers. I'm going to be giving away the Phoenix Pro PTG 11, really nice system. And I will be giving that away to one of my subscribers. So be sure to stick around to find out how you can win one of these for yourself. Before we get started, this is a music tech channel, gear reviews, tutorials, programming. I do gear giveaways on this channel. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when I put out new videos and hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. So if you haven't watched part one and part two, you still should be able to follow along with this video. However, I do recommend watching those first two videos first, just in case if you know there's something missing, but you still should be able to follow along with this video. Okay, part one is just understanding why these are so cheap and how they compare to higher end systems or even just like entry level systems. So some of the things that I've seen is that some people don't understand that these are the cheapest systems that you can get, but how do they compare to, you know, the higher end stuff? So I've, I've said this a ton in my videos, but like my, my Sennheiser system that I use is $1,000. Entry level sure Sennheiser systems that I recommend are usually around $350, $400, $500, somewhere around there. What is different about these $50 cheap plug and play systems compared to those? So just to keep this simple, the Shure BLX is the entry level one that I like to recommend to people. And then my Sennheiser EW 500s are the ones that I like to recommend for higher end stuff. So with that $400 Shure system, those have hundreds of different channels that you can choose from. The channels are, you know, just the frequency that the wireless transmits and receives on, you have to have a clear signal. There can't be any other wireless device in the area using it. If it is, your wireless isn't going to work. So with the $400 Sure system, you get hundreds of them. With my $1,000 Sennheisers, I have over 3,000 frequencies that I can find with those. With these cheap ones, you usually can get like four. I mean, some of them are like, you know, eight or 10. They definitely have a limited number of channels with the cheaper ones. That means if you go to a show, you have four channels that you can choose from with your wireless. If all four of those are taken, you can't use your wireless. With my Sennheiser system, there's, you know, I believe it's 3,500 wireless frequencies that it can transmit on. I've never had a show where I haven't been able to find a clear signal. I've always been able to use my wireless. That's part of what I'm paying for with those higher end ones. In addition to those, even just like, you know, the entry level Shure and Sennheiser systems, you have the ability to scan. You have the ability to see what frequency you're transmitting on and program it directly. You have the ability to just the gain or level or sensitivity of it, just in case, you know, if you're clipping. So like, with active pickups, those are a hotter signal, so you can compensate for that in the receiver or the transmitter. With the higher end stuff, you usually have external antennas, which are better reception. You get better range. You get to see, you know, the RF environment on them. You have squelch controls. You have all sorts of other things that you can control with these higher end ones. With these cheaper ones, it's pretty much the bare minimum. Turn it on, plug it in, hope that it works. You can you have a few things where you, can, where you can change the channel. Some of them, you just turn them on and it does scan by itself, which is nice, but it's not as in-depth as some of the Sure and Sennheiser ones do. And because they're limited in the number of channels specifically, that is what allows you to get dropouts. So dropouts can happen anywhere. You can have dropouts anywhere. That just means that, you know, whatever frequency you're transmitting on, from going from transmitter to the receiver, something interfered with that and it caused the signal to drop out. But the thing is, again, you only have four channels. Think about it, you've seen videos of like Metallica's wireless mics getting cut out. Metallica literally has probably the highest end quality audio. They have a whole sound crew doing it 
and they still sometimes will get a dropout with wireless system. You have to understand that if Metallica can lose their signal, their wireless signal at a show with the highest end gear imaginable, you have to understand like, hmm, this might happen with my $50 wireless system with only four channels. I will give you a very important tip in part three of this video that actually is going to help reduce the chance of that happening. If you do get dropouts, it's not because the wireless sucks, it's because the RF environment is crowded, the wireless environment was crowded, and you played a show, you showed up with a knife to a gunfight. You had four channels, those four channels were taken, therefore your system didn't work. If you want more channels, you gotta spend the money to get more channels available in a wireless system. Other thing that a lot of people think is they see the price tag on these and they go, oh, this is amazing, we can all be wireless. We can, all five of us can have wireless systems, you know, and we can use all of them at once. So I'm just gonna address this quickly because I already went over this in another video of mine, five common mistakes if you use wireless live, but with cheap stuff, you cannot use a bunch of them live all at once. So you know how I said my Sennheiser has 3,000 frequencies. That doesn't mean I can use 3,000 of them at once. I can actually use, I believe it's 32 of these systems all at once. That's still a lot of wireless to use it all at once. The more of these cheap wireless you use at once, the more of a chance that they're not going to work, or at least, you know, one or two of them are not going to work. Because again, you have less frequency options and less channel options to find a clear signal. However, you can improve this by spacing out the wireless. Again, I don't recommend buying five cheap ones and using them all at once, but spacing them out is a good way to do that. That is something that what we do in one of my bands, in my 90s cover band, my singer uses a cheap 5.8 one on his electric guitar and he uses a cheap, the Swift audio one on his acoustic guitar. Most shows, he's usually fine with them. Almost, almost all of them, they're fine. He spaces them out from all of our other ones. And then all the other wireless that we're using, we're all using, you know, higher insurance and Heiser systems. If we all used cheap stuff, if all of those were replaced with the cheap stuff, it absolutely wouldn't work. If you all start using the cheap stuff, you're just increasing the chance of your gear not working. So just keep that in mind. And if you don't want to risk it. If you just don't want to risk it, you don't want to mess around with it, save up the money, get one of the Sure or Sennheiser systems. I reviewed many of those on my channel as well, and I will link to those down below in the description. Okay, so dropouts are one thing, and hopefully that makes more sense now, but what about the question that I get probably the most in all the comments? Does it work with this pickup? Does it work with this bass? Does it work with this acoustic, with this pedal, with this amp? I finally have an answer. You know what it is? I have no idea. I truly don't. I, honest to God, have no idea. The comments will be filled with people saying, oh man, this is awesome, thank you so much, it worked great with my active pickups. And then I'll see another comment just right below it, you know, same system, same video, will say, this doesn't work at all with active pickups, this thing is awful, do not buy. I honestly have no idea. The thing is, is that I found that most of these work, it's not like they won't get a signal, like if you plug it into an active pickup, it's not going to work. However, the three most common complaints I hear, if it doesn't work, is they'll say that there's a hiss or a noise, They'll say it loses sustain, you know, so you get less sustain out of it. Or some people will say that there's like a noise gate. So if you strum too hard, it'll cut out. That could be interference, but you know, that is a complaint that I hear as well. The ones that say like, oh, it turned up or turned down the volume, you, you know, there's like a knob that you can do to just on your amp, just turn up the master a little bit. So that one I think is just people being picky personally. If it's making your signal so hot that it's distorting it, that's one thing, but it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna turn the gain up or my master volume up on my amp a little bit. That's not the end of the world. But those other three complaints are the ones that I hear the most. I get more positive ones than I get negative ones, but addressing the negative ones of like, oh, this didn't work, or this causes hiss or noise or a lack of sustain with my insert guitar pickup or pedal here, I honestly don't know why some of them do that. I did notice the problem with the sustain one time when I used the Licata ones. It was one of the coolest shows I've ever done in my life. We got to go to Miami. We got to go on a yacht for a, a, like a private company party and we got to sail around Miami at night. Awesome view, I, it was so cool. I love that city, especially at night and, and being on the water it was amazing. We, when we were doing that, I did notice I went very X guitar straight into my HX stomp and that was it. That was my fly rig, it worked out really well. I did notice, I was like, man, there's something wrong with like the sustain on my guitar right now. I noticed it during sound check. After that, I honestly didn't care because it was just such a, it was just such a cool experience and I guarantee you the audience didn't care. No one in the audience was going, hmm, I hear a lack of sustain coming out of that HX stomp. But I did notice notice it that one time, but every time else it's been fine. So maybe it was like a power issue. I mean, how is, how's the power for a band 
like on a boat. Like I, that was my first time doing that. Every other time it's been fine. However, the 5.8 gigahertz one by Nuex, that was one of my favorite ones. I love that one because it has like a carrying case that charges the wireless. So it's like, you know, Apple AirPods thing where the case charges it. And then, you know, you charge the case after a while. So really, really cool. I love that one. That worked great with my PRS. That worked great with my acoustic until I got my GTRS guitar. And now it doesn't work. I, I don't know why it's doing that but for some reason it doesn't work with that guitar. That's just something you do have to accept. It might not work with your specific guitar. It might work with some of them. It might not work with other ones. So what do you do? The best answer, every single person should do this when they get their cheap wireless system. Try it out as soon as you get it with your setup. If it doesn't work, return it. I mean, that that's it. That's really That really is it. These will work more times than they won't work. I see more positive comments than I, than I see negative comments. But you always want to try it out as soon as you get it and return it if it doesn't work and try a different one. Dropouts are something completely different. Remember, we went over that earlier. That's That all depends on the wireless environment. But if you try these out and they don't work with your specific setup, then you know to return it and try something else. I understand that can be frustrating. No one wants to return gear, you know, after they got it. You just have to accept that's a possibility. And that's true with any piece of gear anyways. So try it out immediately once you get it. You'll know if it doesn't work with your specific setup. If you don't want to risk it, what could I possibly say next? Get a Sure or Sennheiser system, save up the money, and don't risk it. So every time I get that question in the comments of does it work with this, 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 or this, I'm just going to direct them to this video now because I, honest to God, just have no idea. All right, so the last part, what is the best way to use these? Who are these for? And when is the best way to use them? Or how is the best way to use them? One of the best ways to use this is because, like I said, there's a limited number of channels in these. I recommend buying two of them and buy two of them on different frequencies. So the thing is, if you buy one on 5.8 gigahertz, and for some reason 5.8 gigahertz is giving you trouble, it wouldn't make sense to switch to another one on 5.8, right? But if you switch to like another one in the 900 megahertz, there's a more likely chance that it's going to work since 5.8 is clearly crowded in the venue that you're playing at. You can get two of them for $100, which is already cheap. I do recommend actually getting three. They're about $50 each, so get one in 2.4, one in 5.8, and then one in 900 megahertz assuming that your country allows 900 megahertz, the United States does. And then you have three different options. So if, you know, 2.4 is crowded, 2.4 is usually the most crowded. So that's the one I usually use the least. But if I try like my 900 one and that one's crowded, I'll switch to my 5.8. If all three of them are taken, then you switch to a cable. I haven't had to switch to a cable using this method so far. Knock on wood, right? But getting two of them for $100, that's a quarter of the price of the entry-level Sure system and like a tenth of the price of my nice Sennheiser system. Or, you know, to get three of them and then you really have all of your bases covered. And then you also have a backup. You have one for practice and stuff like that in case you forget to charge it. But just at least getting two is definitely a good way to improve the chances that your wireless is going to work live. So are you going to be using these? If so, you need to understand those limitations, but realize that you can still use them. So like I said, I did get a gig with these for two weeks in the Bahamas. It was an amazing trip. That water is unbelievable. But the thing is, is like when we were playing, we were right by our mixer. I, I was standing, you know, five feet from the mixer. Guitar went right into the mixer right behind me. I wasn't going very far. We were playing, you know, during sunset for happy hour. It wasn't a you know, massive stage and running around the stage or anything like that. That is a good time to use these. I know in the first video, I mentioned how I used the X Vive in at a show with in front of 60,000 people. I should not have done that. That was probably not the best idea, but I mean, at the same time, it did work. It did work. It was only for two songs. It was with a country band, so I had to play banjo for two songs, so that's what I used it for. It worked. You know, I didn't have any problems with it. So these can work. It's more how much of a risk is it to you if they're not going to work. If you want a slim to none chance that your wireless is going to cut out, if you want your wireless to work basically 100% of the time, got to save up the money and get a nice one. If you want to increase your chances of these working with these cheap ones, use my advice about getting two or three all on different frequencies. So if one frequency is crowded, switch to another one. Or if you're just like, eh, I'll try it at sound check. If it doesn't work, no big deal. I'm going to switch to a cable. Then just get one of them. It's up to you to balance, you know, budget versus reliability and risk and all of that. Hopefully this video has helped you understand that. So which ones do I recommend? So Still to this day, the first one they usually recommend to people is the Swift Audio one. That's usually my go-to one, and it's probably my most popular video as far as the individual ones. I really like that one. Like I said, that's the one that I used in the Bahamas, and that was the first one that I tried, and it worked. I did have, you know, a 5.8 and a 2.4 with me in case if they didn't. 
that one did happen to work. For the 5.8 one, I really like the new X ones. They have a 5.8 and a 2.4 one, and they come in those cases with the charging. It is really cool, it protects it, it charges it. Really good design. They specifically work with active pickups. They advertise it as such. I do really like that one. Those are more expensive though, about you know 150-ish around there. So going with my, oh, buy three of them for 50 bucks, th that's up to you. If you don't want to spend that much money, I do like the Guitaria and the Licata ones on 5.8. Most of these are all ripoffs of each other, or at least somehow copycats. You'll see them on Amazon, you'll just scroll through them and you'll see a bunch of different ones. The main difference with them is what frequency are they're on. Most of them are on 2.4 or 5.8. Some of them are in the 900s. A lot of people will ask, oh, can you review this one? Can you review this one? It's like, well, it's just another 5.8 gigahertz system with four channels. There's nothing different about these compared to the other ones. Most important thing is just get them on different frequencies. As far as the 2.4, the Guitario one's the one that I have, so that's usually the one I recommend. The Brian Fay one is really nice as well. That's in a band that I'm not as familiar with. It does have a, a charging case as well. It's very long, like it, it sticks out pretty far, but it is a really cool system though. But I will post links down below to the ones that I recommend. All right, do you want to stop messing around with the cheap stuff? I'll quickly give you the recommendations that I have for, you know, higher end wireless. Entry level, I definitely like the Shure BLX. Do you get the ones with the external antennas? It's like $50 more. Those are much more reliable. The next level up will be the Sennheiser EW100s. Those will run you about $500, $600. If you want to go higher than that, I do recommend the Shure SLXD. Very, very nice system. And then above that, I would say the Sennheiser EW500 that I have. I love that system. And if you want to go really crazy, I would go and get the Shure ULXD system. So that's basically it. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Like I said, I will be giving away the Phoenix Pro PTG11 system that I have. This one is really cool because it's still the plug and play transmitter. So it's very easy and portable but it has an actual receiver. It has like a hundred different channels with this one. It has antennas for better range and stuff like that. Really cool system. I would rather give it to you guys. I'm really grateful for how much the channel has grown over these last couple of years. I'm super grateful for it and I enjoy being able to give back to you guys. So I try to do as many giveaways as I can. So to enter, first of all, you, this one is only for the United States, unless if you look up, so you can look up, you know, to see if the 900, 902 to 920, eight megahertz frequency is legal in your region. I know some people in Europe and I believe Canada say that you can't use that. So this one is mostly for the United States, unless if you find out that your country does allow 900 megahertz frequencies to be used. So if you do want to be entered, you won, you have to be a subscriber. This is only for subscribers. And you have to leave a comment down below using the magic phrase. First time it was pickles, second time it was peanut butter. So third time, this is going to be pineapple pizza. You have to use the word pineapple pizza sometime in the comment section down below in order to be entered to win the drawing for this free wireless system. You can say whatever you want, just at some point, just say pineapple pizza. I will do the drawing on my YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook stories. That's the best way to do this, and I will contact the winner. Please do not respond to scammers. I will never, ever, ever, ever ask you for money for these giveaways. So thank you guys again for watching. If you guys found this content helpful, do me a favor, just hit the thumbs up button. So if you're in the market for some cheap in-ear monitor systems, I've also done multiple reviews on those, as well as cheap wireless microphones and stuff like that. I also have reviewed the higher end stuff as well. So if you're interested in checking out some of those, click some of the links on your screen now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Yule Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.